Alright, hello. Am I on? I should be on. Cool. Um, <coughs> this is Undertale. I'm gonna be doing the neutral ending, so... Uh, yeah, let's just get started. So on the naming screen, we can just name ourselves anything we want. Uh, anything that's one letter is ideal, so let's just go like capital A oh. right here. And uh, should we do a countdown? Yeah. All right, three, two, one, go. Woo! All right. So firstly, about the mashing of this game. Now, you want to be pressing X and Z repeatedly, essentially, to mash through text boxes as fast as possible. However, not just Z and X, because um, Enter and Shift also, like, Enter is the same input as Z, and Shift is the same input as X. So essentially, how I'm mashing skippable text is I'm just, um, in sequence, I'm pressing Z, X, Shift, and Enter very quickly. This is called like piano mashing, doing it sequentially like this. It's good because it doesn't hurt my hands like too much. It it's gets pretty weird. grueling. It's one of the weirdest ways of mashing I've ever seen. Another thing to mention is that we are playing on version 1.01. Um, there is a reason for that, and that's because there's a couple of exclusive glitches on this version that you'll see later, but I'll also we're playing on the Linux version, even though we're playing on Windows. And the reason for that is because on Linux, you get this weird kind of thing where pressing, holding down Z and then pressing Enter still counts as a separate input. Oh, nice move, my new. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to uh, actually just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. That's all right. Small time loss. Yeah, and this is the ruins. Yeah, just flee from Frogger here real quick. Uh, one glitch which I'll show off in the next room is a little thing called wall humping. Basically, I press three keys at the same time, up, down, and and like uh, left or right. And basically, not only do I move right, but I have I also move up and down. But because of how inputs work, I just move up and it causes this fun visual thing. It's very funny. I like to just do it in rooms where it doesn't really lose any time. Believe it or not, that does actually have a use in one of it, the categories. So. I mean, it has like one use in this run, in Waterfall, just for one room. Oh, true, true, true. Um, but in Genocide, actually doing that increments your step counter every single frame. So yeah. by doing that, you're able to get encounters super, super fast. So if you were doing a genocide run, you'd actually start farming for encounters right here, but uh, this is neutral. Yeah, we don't. We actually don't want encounters here because they lose time, stop Frisk from moving, so... Alright, I normally move... Uh, you just interact with that sign there, to, I believe it avoids... Uh, it avoids a phone call cutscene. And in that encounter, normally you just flee from every encounter but in this case there's about a 50% chance that you get so an enemy that can be spared just straight away and because there's a fleeing animation you do if you do get that enemy you want to spare so that one was you, if we just spared there we would have still had frog it there so just wanted to flee there All right, I'm gonna safety save because there's a potential miss menu in this next fight could lose like a good couple minutes so don't want that Cool. This uh, is Napster Block. Yep. Uh, he's a sad little ghost. Um, very simple fight. Uh, you just got to talk to him four times. Well, specifically cheer him up four times. But uh, if you miss that uh, after the third input, it could be really bad. So yeah, <laughs> safety save there is very, very understandable. Nice. But yeah, this is neutral. So we're going for basically. It's neutral, the neutral ending, which means not true pacifist and not genocide. Um, and what we're basically going to be doing is the fastest way to play this game is by not encountering any monsters. So the way that that works for neutral is we're going to be fleeing from every monster that we see, but where we pick up the neutral ending is in the final section of the game where we just kill one monster, and that gives us the neutral ending instead of putting us on the true pacifist route. Well. In, in the true pacifist category, you do still have to get the neutral ending. Yes. Uh, but this one, we actually just, yeah, we kill one monster. It levels us up for the final fight where 
the final boss fight where we will ideally be at love love four, so then we do more damage. Yeah, more damage, have a little bit more health for safety as well. It's just a nice little thing, and it's a very fast kill as well. All right, now going to Toriel's house here. Uh, uh, we get offered the pie here, but we don't take it because it, we take it in true pacifist because that's basically it makes Asgore the final boss weaker. But because we level up later in the run, in the case of neutral, we don't need that extra weakening. Now, coming up is the Toriel fight, which biggest like RNG part of the run. Uh, a lot of runs die there because ideally you want to um, get like these hand attacks. Uh, we call them hand attacks because the hand appears, and you can run into the hand, and the attack skips itself. So we want to get as much of those as possible. And but then also there's another way. Uh, like this one, we just want to get on 1 HP. Yep, cool. Uh, that's so we can take more hits. Uh, if we get happen to get like a lot of hands, we can take advantage of that. But we also not only want to take damage from the hands, but we want to get to 3 HP. And once we get to 3 HP, we take any form of damage and the attack is skipped as well. Oh, nice. Nice. Three hands. That's not... Four hands already. That's pretty good. Yeah. So the other thing about this fight is that once you get down to 3 HP, she's gonna do this long, quite a, quite a slow attack. So you're trying to get as many spares off while you're on like a decent amount of health uh, before she does that attack. Nice. Yeah. So that this was is, really good. Yeah, that was really good. Um, yeah, and that's the really slow attack, and that's the end of Toriel. Yeah. Uh, this is a pretty relatively like uneventful section for about a minute, so just a lot of mashing. Yeah, do we have any donations? I was going to say, is that my cue to actually talk when I should be talking? <laughs> yeah, um, okay, so uh, we do have a couple of, uh, they are anonymous incentives, but there was $15 towards the karaoke incentive for American Arcadia. Um, another $15 towards cast form nickname in Pokemon to be Geodude. Um, we also have a $20 anonymous dona donation towards the Dragons, Dogma, Shrek and Fiona incentive. So thank you so much for all your generous donations and keep them coming. Yeah, so we actually do have a donation incentive for this run as well. Uh, basically in the final fight, uh, there's a little... Uh, it, the final fight is more or less an auto-scroller, but there is a little like fun meme that we talk about in the Undertale community a little bit. Um, so that is go left or right on the purple soul phase. Um, I, al I always go right. I usually go left. <laughs> Damn. Um, but we'll explain it when we get there. Yeah. Right, so coming up on Snowden here, this one's luckily a lot less RNG dependent, just a lot of mashing and menuing stuff. And we get to see our favorite funny little skeletons. Yep. But yeah, a lot of the first half of this game is um, mashing and trying to avoid encounters when you can, unfortunately. Um, but once we get into the third area of the game, Waterfall, that's where this game gets broken wide open. And yeah. the game starts to get really, really fun. Um, just a quick glitch I like to go for here because it saves one frame and it's frame perfect. But you essentially, I think it's something to do with pixels, but you move up the frame that you get into this cutscene trigger. And I believe Sans comes up to you here like a frame earlier. It saves the frame. I just like to go for it. I don't think I got it, but... Yeah. Yeah, the first half of Snowden is more or less just cutscenes. There are some fights coming up uh, for the dogs. Um, and each of the dogs has their own fastest way of dealing with them. We generally don't want to be killing enemies because killing enemies in this game is actually quite slow unless you have a little bit of like XP already. Um, so we are going to be aiming to spare or flee from all of, most of, if not all, of the enemies that we encounter. Yeah, there's only one enemy that we kill, and it's because it's an insta-kill and gives us e valuable XP for the final fight. All right, cool little menu here. coming up here. 
Nice. Awesome menu. Now, uh, right now, we have this. Um, we equipped the tough gloves, so we have this stick in our inventory. Now, something funny about the stick is it instantly makes every dog boss in the game sparable. So that would be, yeah, like about three fights throughout Snowden. Yeah, the idea of that is that you throw the stick and the dog gets really happy. But you can also throw the stick in the Papyrus fight, just for a fun little Easter egg, and the Papyrus will go and fetch it. I'm oh, nice. Nice. That's <laughs> fun event, by the way. Um, that's like a 10% chance of happening. Basically, fun value if you don't know. Every, every time you reset the save file, basically a number from 1 to 100 gets rolled completely randomly, and that number can influence events like that happening. Is your refrigerator right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, fun value in this game is just like a little cool easter egg. It leads to a couple lore bits, so if you're curious about them, you can like view them on YouTube and yeah. there's a lot of implications for it, but that's one of the like more funny ones. I believe there's three that can happen in Snowden. There's that one, and then Alphas can call you to order a pizza. Wrong number song as yes. well. Yes, and then also the sound that. test. But So that's four. I, I can't count. Oh yeah, sound test. But uh, you don't encounter the sound test. Unfortunately, this does mean that we cannot get the ga Gaster Hallway, which is a one in a hundred chance. Yes. That Once been... your fun value is set, it's yeah. that so. It would have been great to get, to get Gaster Hallway, but that's alright. That would have been really funny. Well, it's a one in a hundred to get the fun value, and then it's another one in ten chance to to actually get the cast of hallway. Am I am I correct in saying that? Yeah. So it would have been a very low chance. Fun but... fact about that: you can actually get the door like several times as long as you keep rolling the same like one in ten chance. All right. So this dog eye fight, we just use the stick again. Dogami and Dogarasa. Yes. Now there's actually a way to skip that, but it involves using like an external program and like the snowballs elsewhere in the room to read the RNG seed so that you can get an encounter on the same frame as getting into the cutscene trigger for the fight. I I personally don't know how to do it. Uh, coming up to a are you going for ice puzzle skip? Yes. Yeah, so coming up to one of the skips, a lot of the skips in the early game are pretty minor, but this is one of the big ones. Um, if you buffer and move to a specific pixel and then press down and right on the same frame and do the ice puzzle in a specific way, uh, you will skip the cutscene of the bridge appearing, which saves a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, for this cutscene here, you actually don't want to, you want to pretend you don't understand it, which, how would you? It's a very simple puzzle. Um, but basically that prevents like a cutscene from happening and saves about 15 seconds or something. All right, so this one I'll be doing some like like Violet said, just that's sub some sub pixel alignment just to make the trick a little easier. Let's see. Nice. Hey, nice. All right. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Failed right at the end. All right. The idea of this puzzle is that you can only go over each uh, symbol Frick. once. That's okay. All right. Really funny glitch, so I want to keep going for it. There we go. Nice. So, yeah, that just it looks very funny because you go over the bridge that's still getting made. And a Greater Dog, it's supposed to be a slight complicated puzzle um, where you like do many things, but we, we just use the stick. Make, it, it makes Greater Dog happy enough to be sparable, so just use the stick. Yeah, this game. Oh, nice. Dog skip. Um, that's another thing similar to the hands where there are some attacks in this game where if you run into them once, the attack will instantly end. So you can utilize that to save a little bit of time. And that is RNG just there, but uh, got it. So very nice. Yeah. I believe there's a very risky strat that not a lot of people go for where you can go for it, like, just a repeatedly ignore you know, Greater Dog, which will make the fight itself longer, but... But it will skip a cutscene off, a short cutscene off the fight. So if you get lucky enough in the attacks to get enough of those dogs, then 
then it just happens to save like a couple seconds or something. I think you have to ignore him three or four times though, so you'd have to get dogs, you'd have to get the sleeping dog attack three or four times, which is not a high chance, but it's it's cool that it exists. All right, so we're coming up on the Papyrus fight here. Now, Papyrus, a uh, very difficult boss. I'll see if I can do him first try. Um, it's a shame if I, it should be a shame if I died here. Yeah, and it's a very long fight as well, so if you die, it's, it's actually pretty bad. Mm. Harder than Sans, arguably. Alright, I do use the stick there, just to, because otherwise... Oh wait, no, I'm not doing well in this fight. So you meant oh, to no. avoid the white things? Oh wait, what, really? Wait. Oh. Oh. That's a shame. Nice try, nice try. Okay, so what we actually want to do in the Papyrus fight is we actually want to die die three times so that Papyrus can capture us. And when when he captures us th for the third time, he will offer to be spared, essentially, just, just like that. And that's faster than the fight itself because it is actually a very long fight. Yeah. Very long fight. The animations take forever. There's a very long attack at the very end, so it actually ends up being faster to just die three times and now that we have are in blue soul mode it's fun like it's another soul mode where essentially it's like gravity is there so you can jump now we won't be using that in this run because the only fight with in the neutral route is this one where we just die yeah no sense today not today um but yeah, you might notice that we used the stick in the very first fight, and the reason for that is because it's slightly faster, it only leads to one tech box. But if you throw the stick in this version of the fight, he'll go, what? I would never I would never fetch. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Even though he fetched in the first phase, but we don't talk about that. So this is Papyrus number three? Yep. Yeah, this is Papyrus number three. He's hungry for justice. He is hungry for justice. Now he really I fix this garage. Yeah, I really need to not accidentally just fully mash for the for this next Papyrus cutscene because he'll offer to spare him, but for the choice I'll need to press Riot, and the default option is to just go into an yet another phase of Papyrus, which would lose by like 40 seconds. Yeah. He offers, would you like to fight me again or would you like to just leave? <laughs> and obviously you want to choose leave, but um... The default option is fight, so. Alright. And we're coming up on Waterfall. The, this is where the glitches start happening. In fact, there's this item uh, that I'll just talk about now. See how I go explaining it? Oh, that's close. Um, basically, nice. it's it's very broken. It can be used to skip like most cutscenes. And... So, like, there are four things you can do with it. You can store a text box, which can be used for many things. You can you can get movement during cutscene, uh, letting you skip the cutscene. You can wrong warp, basically warping to the default default position of a room, which saves time in many spots. Oh yeah, and this is a relatively new skip. Uh, I, I just saw you menu to the cell phone, so I got... Yeah, yeah, this is a seagrass skip. Um... I'll see how I go with it. Uh, basically, you just call Toriel uh, before the cutscene starts, uh, and then that gives you movement and lets you skip this long cutscene where Undyne seems to see almost see you. So nice. I got it. Nice. Didn't fail the first major glitch of the run. That's good. That's a good sign. That All is right. deceptively hard because you are in the seagrass. You can't really say where you need to go, and um, you do have to I, move a little I, bit. I'm using this setup where you just move down to the bottom of the grass, and you're automatically set up. Oh no way! <laughs> I've been speedrunning this game uh, for for a while, so I'm not like super up to date on all of the glitches. But I do remember that one being found. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in this game. All right, and then this one we want to just throw away the the stick. Save. Uh, Basically, if you don't have an empty inventory except for a punch card, then you have to do some me menuing in like a box. It So I'm doing a strat that saves like a little bit of time. Yeah, see I remember the box menuing. <laughs> I actually didn't know that you could 
throw away the stick. That's really Well, smart. that's a strat, but I don't think it saves time like at that speed, but if you do the menuing really fast, it does save time. Yeah, and because you're waiting for the flowers to open anyway, I suppose it saves time. Yeah. All right, coming up on the spear chase here. Um, I guess we have time for donations, I think. That is great, because we've had quite a few come through. So we have had uh, $20 from Chili Pepper that says, Going left fills you with determination. Uh, no one would donate for the right gang. I would donate for the right gang, for your information. <laughs> we also have $100 from Mega Slayer that says, Keep up the amazing runs, everyone. I would like to put this towards making the Lati gang in Pokemon. $25 to the name Groudon into Latius. $25 for the, na for the name for Kyogre into Lati S and to name cast form into Latiis. And the last $25 to Olive's choice of left or right gang. All right, go right gang. I right think. gang, okay. All right, got it. Thank you. All right, so we're coming up where we get the punch card. So this is where the game starts to get really broken. All right, let's just mash away these long cutscenes. Here's our favorite little guy. Favorite little guy. This is where the Gaster hallway would appear if you uh, if the fun value was there, but unfortunately not today. Not today. So we buy a nice cream from the nice cream man and he gives us a punch card. Alright, keep that so that the punch card is our first item in our inventory because we're gonna be interacting with a punch card a lot. Cool, didn't soft nice. lock on the first one, wrong walk. <laughs> so, there's a lot of different things you can do with the punch card. The punch card, specifically what happened there was a wrong warp, and wrong warps allow you to, instead of warping to, like, the transition that you just entered, you actually warp to specific coordinates in the room uh, that are referenced when you, um, what if you were to save in them, even though there's no save point in here. So it does actually save quite a lot of movement time. Uh, does anyone like Onion Sum? Too bad. Okay, well we still get we still get Onion Sun's text boxes, but we're gonna be skipping the cutscene itself. So bye bye. Be prepared for, for a lot of cutscene skips like that. Yeah. So basically, the way the punch card, like the technical info of how the punch card works, is that there's one frame between uh, opening the punch card UI and the actual UI appearing on the screen which in that one frame you are able to input. You can do movement, you can open a text box, you can do all kinds of things. And then upon closing the punch card, you get control back. So what we're basically doing is by opening the punch card at very specific times and then doing something in that frame, closing the punch card will give you movement back or store a text box and you can do all kinds of really funky stuff with that. All right, this one, the, we just, you can just open the punch card at a certain time. It's quite a big window. Just do that and it somehow skips a cutscene. So one time. All right, um, wall humping here, like I mentioned earlier, it this gets you double speed in the room, so I'm moving through it very quickly. <laughs> it's because there's no like, there's no vertical space for Frisk to move, and I believe that just means, that just means you get double speed if you press up and down, so. All right, that's an overflow, so. All right. This one has quite a tricky uh, visual cue. So we'll see if I get the trick. Cool. Nice. All right. And so now I'm going to be going for this thing. It. I don't. I doubt I'll actually get it, but we'll see how it goes. All right. So I'm opening. I have that text stored now. So basically. Similar to a regular one, I can use this text box in the screen transition and close it there to do or basically, yeah, warp to the default position of a room. Similar to how punch card wrong warps were, but this one, because you that one, it's really easy to store that text box. You just kind of go for it. Don't take the song before this is cool. It's called a Willy Warp, named after someone in the community who's nice. a very cool tassel. Yeah, so you might see there that Olive warped to the middle of the room instead of warping yeah, through the left side of the room. Yeah, saves a bit of time. Room. Yeah, because there's no, like, dash or anything in this right. game. Now, 
If it was a regular run, I would be opening Flow Timer just so I can go for Mad Dummy Skip, but it's frame perfect and really difficult to set up, so I will not be going for that in this run. Instead, it's I would very just, difficult. <laughs> yeah. I would just be going for the regular Mad Dummy, which the first phase can be beaten in a minimum of five turns, so hopefully I get that. Mad Dummy Skip actually has a pretty long history of people trying to find how to do it. Um, you would... So one of the main things that we've been doing with the punch card is uh, cutscene skips, basically. So when you enter a text box, you lose all control, but opening the punch card and then closing it gives you back control. Hey. Oh, nice. If you, if you exit that out of, out of that plank on the corner, you, it doesn't register that you're on water, so you just Chris just kind of turns into Jesus there. Um, but basically, you would be able to buffer the text box here that you get stopped by, but there's actually an invisible wall here, and I think that's the only instance of an invisible wall in the entire game. There might be I, there might be some in, like, the earlier, earlier parts of the game where you don't actually have the punch card, if I remember. Here's Mad Dummy. But in the case of neutral, this is the only one that actually affects anything. Alright, we're just taking damage on here, here on purpose. Because if you actually hit him with too much cotton balls, then his attacks change and you won't be able to get the five cycle. Alright. And I have memorized positions for where to position my soul to hit the cotton balls on the mad dummy. This one we also take damage for the sake of positioning. Alright. That one's not great. Nah. I don't know if this can five cycle. Uh, no. No big deal, just take another turn. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that is actually an incredibly technical boss fight. There are very specific places where you need to go in order to get all of the cotton balls to run into Mad Dummy. And it's just so precise. So people are looking for a way to skip this fight for a really long time because, like, after that, you, this is just a cutscene battle. Yeah, it's also two minutes long, so... Yeah. <laughs> Mad Dummy Skip saves, like, a one minute, 50 seconds. Yeah, but it is so precise because what you're essentially doing is... It's hard to explain the exact technicalities to it, but the idea is is that you exit the room as the Mad Dummy fight starts, and it sets some flags incorrectly, and it thinks that the next time you enter, if you die on this fight, uh, you've already beaten Mad Dummy, so you can just walk right past the invisible wall. Um, but it's it's so difficult. <laughs> I came back to this game a little bit after Mad Dummy Skip was found, and I think I got it like maybe once in like an hour, and it's just, it's not fun. Yeah. Uh... I started running this game after it was discovered and like from the start of 2022 so it was always there. I decided to line up when going for sub hour. Although it, you don't need it for it being in this game in under an hour. It's not mandatory. It is a very cool like instance of glitches still being found like you know long after this game has come out. Um, you know, this game is, it, it's pretty cool, and um, it's one of my favorite games, and I think the speedrun is also really, really fun. Alright, this one, I'm, I was just gonna skip the next book's cutscene, hopefully I get it. Nice. Aw. Oh. Didn't really skip it, because I, I tried to go for that save point and save before the text boxes appeared, but didn't quite get that. Alright, go for this wrong warp. Uh... Cool. Nice. That that saves like one of the bigger wrong orbs in the game. It saves like three seconds. This one's also pretty good, so I'm gonna go for it. Nice. So something to note about wrong orbs is that uh, every single time Olive does a wrong orb, uh, he's trying very hard not to soft lock. Yeah. <laughs> so scary. it's quite risky, actually. Not if you're good, obviously. Um, but. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to close the punch card in the transition, and if you close it too early, you won't get the wrong one, but if you close it too late, you will lose control because the flag is not set for you to regain control, 
and you just get stuck and you can't move and that's no fun. All right, uh, I'm going to go going for something called flower flow where essentially we're trying to get movement during the cutscene to save about five seconds. But the thing is, there's so much flags for Frisk to stop moving that we have to open the punch card a lot. Like here, just have to close the punch card uh, as soon as Undyne starts talking here. Oh, didn't get it. Uh. I needed good reflexes because then, as soon as Undyne's text box stopped, I needed to really quickly open the punch card. And if I overmash it, then the punch card closes, so. This is still a very funny cutscene with Frisk in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it is very funny. Maybe Mon Monster Kid's just talking to the Echo Flower, you know? But yeah, we've also mentioned this thing called text overflows, or flow, basically, as a shorthand. This is a pretty big wrong wall. Uh, there we go. Nice. Skips you all the way to the end of that room. Another skip coming up here. This is Monster Kid skip. Okay. Double nice. Water. Yo. Yo. Alright, go, go. Nice. Okay, so coming up we have... Uh, are you going for one dime? I'm not going for the uh, for one dime. I'm just going for the one symbol. Understandable. This is the Undyne skip. So you can't fully skip the Undyne fight, but the idea of how the Undyne fight works is that you need to run away from her four times. So what we're trying to do here is we are trying to uh, skip a bunch of triggers to get further into the room in order to skip the first three phases. And that one skips the first phase, and then we wrong walk here. Uh, So then nice. we can go through this room without uh, running into another phase. And then this is the only time we actually run into Undyne, so... Because this un fight ends as soon as you get to a certain room, rather unlike other fights which end like, after a certain amount of turns or once you've done something. And this one we're just challenging Undyne to make her bullets faster. Challenge her three times just to make a bullet go faster and make the attack end. Um, but basically, breakdown of what we did just there, uh, we skipped a cutscene trigger so that we could walk into the next room without having to enter the first phase of the Undyne fight, and then do a wrong warp to get far enough into the room so that um, you will not, uh, so that you won't get caught by her, and then you enter this room and this is the final. Master Papyrus is very inconvenient, phone call. What I just did in that last room, uh, turn there, I took damage on purpose to set up for a trick later. Is this water skip? Is that what it's called? I call it water skip, but yeah, I don't fair. know. I don't really know if it's called that. Uh, fun fact: in the true pacifist version, uh, you're meant to put the water on Undyne so that, like, you know, she's not dead. Uh, but if you skip the trigger for before she falls, uh, it just assumes that you gave her the water. So. Yeah. Using right. text storage there to end the cutscene. Well, get movement in the cutscene earlier and leave. Just leave. Bye, Alphys. And we still have somehow have a notifications. Don't really know how that works. Um, so this one, this is the one encounter where we do fight. Uh, well, obviously Asgore as well, but that's one where we kill that enemy. Just that's where we level up. Yeah, that's the only kill in the neutral route. Uh, only non-boss kill in the neutral route. So this is Hotland. This is where the game kind of gets even more broken. Even more broken. We kind of skip every single cutscene. Wait, what? Nope. Oh. Okay. There we go. Nice. So trying to get out of bounds there by punch card exploiting on top of the little springboards and by closing the punch card in the middle of the spring you actually uh, get uh, movement back in the air, so you can just clip out of bounds. Yeah, and back there we just got the burnt pan, so that's a very powerful weapon, which, if you get the perfect hit, does a lot of damage, so that's going to be very useful in the final fight. Uh, I'm just going to be running the lasers here, and that's why we took damage there, so then we get to 1 HP, and uh, Alfie's de deactivates the lasers. Right. This is two door skip. Yep, east west. Uh, there we go. 
just punch card exploit right through the door, yep. hit the hit the load zone and skip both right. of those puzzles. This one we just use uh jetpack skip here. Uh, so that one, basically there's two cutscene triggers there. One is uh, to activate the cooking show and the other is to like activate like the jetpack mini game. We get to skip both because um, because we get storage on one bit of text, then storage on on the next bit of text. So then, yeah, we can skip that. Now, right now we're going to left floor one here because I'm pressing the menu button. We don't have our menu, which means we can't open the punch card. Which is very bad, but we just go to left floor one here, and we can not equip the burnt pan, but we can open the punch card again. Now I'm just gonna take another safety save here, uh, and we text over for this one just so we can walk out of the elevator early. Nice, man. By science. So coming up, we do have a little bit of yeah, volume yeah, warning. Yeah, yeah, volume warning. It's very loud. Uh, there's a little skip called triple switch skip. Yeah, it's basically just Alfie's calls you every frame, so that's a lot of phone calls. There we go. All really right. cool glitch. Really funny. Oh, darn it. Nice. Cool. That, you just do a similar thing to... Alright, safety save here, because these are some very big skips. We're skipping real guards. Alright. Oh, what? Oh. I'm just going to have to quick hit a quick reload here. Luckily, uh, in this game, the start loading... The title screens can be skipped through really quickly, so... So you'll see Olive actually moving and opening the menu on the same frame, and what you can do... I'll oh, shut up for this. <laughs> now you can go. Nice. Okay, that's news skip. Um, but basically what you can do is you can buffer right and menu on the same frame, and that will move Frisk one pixel while having the menu open, and it will not trigger the cutscene if you've entered a cutscene trigger, which allows us to then open the punch card, close it to regain control, and then skip the entire um, I'm I still don't have my menu, because this one got rid of my menu again, so we have time for a quick donation while I go to left floor one. That is good to hear because we have a hundred dollars from on l which says thank you for letting me show off crimson sea at a major event like this thrilled that i got technical world record put this towards super kiwi 64 doomsday incentive we also have another 30 dollars from chili pepper who says hey olive sorry it sounds like you accidentally chose the wrong side here's another for the left gang to fix things I and there's a love heart there <laughs> I didn't choose the wrong side. It's gonna be on the right. All right, this one is tr quite tricky. I have to mash very fast. Uh, yeah, these springboards don't send you very fast. You have to mash really quickly to get the movement that you need. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, hey, I've got both first go. try. Uh, by by very quickly, um, she means you have to close the front punch card uh, frame perfectly. By uh, that one, you get text over the floor here. Just to do a wrong warp and save here. Nice. Uh, my fifth skip is actually the easiest, probably the easiest punch card skip in the game because you get five opportunities, like with little cutscene triggers, to skip Muffet. So yeah, if um, you have a text box open, the boss doesn't trigger, so you can just walk right through. Okay, and then this one's a big one. Hopefully, you don't fail this one. Nice. And that's musical skip. Yep. Uh, and then, now, we would go to left floor one right now, but we have to activate a story flag. So basically, we just have to activate a cutscene here and then head back to left floor one. And then we finally have our menu back. Uh, so we have time for another donation. Alrighty. So uh, we do have a number of incentives still 
available. It's still early in the game, so there's still lots going on uh, for the rest of the marathon, obviously, but we do have several uh, donation incentives, including for this game. There is a bit of a bidding war going on between left and right. Uh, currently, we do have uh, left in the lead. So if you want to see right side, you're going to need to to get some of those donations in towards the right side to see that happen. Um, but yes, so thank you very much. Yeah, so just lots of menuing, lots of opening the punch card to just skip over basically everything. Uh, right there, you can overflow the elevator prompt, and what that does is allows you to select the floor and then just walk out before the elevator actually technically arrives because it loads the transition as soon as you select the floor. It just You don't have control, but when you do get control, you can just walk right out. All right. I'm gonna couple of core here. Uh, just a good magic skip. If you if you miss that skip, it actually saves more time to just do the battle than to reload. So that's good because you have to walk so far. Yeah, but this is core. This is uh, one of the final areas in the game, and we're gonna be skipping pretty much all of it. Like usual. Yeah. All right, laser bridge skip here. Cool. All right, now, not only did I just skip that whole, like, sequence, I now have a text box which I, I can use to wrong warp into the next room, so that's, yeah, that's pretty good. Yep, cool, gonna save you, save you. Now, I'm gonna go for this, um, a lot of wrong warps after this puzzle, which, uh, just for, real quick for this puzzle, you just overflow and you get movement during the puzzle, which means you can go right before the screen transition, and then you can... Normally you can get a text box there, but I didn't, couldn't figure out how to get a text box there because normally you quit the bump hand, so you have a text box which you can use to roll up into the next room. Nice. Have you seen this before, Violet? No, this is all new to me. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't even know if I'm fast enough to save time with it, but that is snowy core where you, instead of going through the core normally, you just go through it backwards and you just and that is such a technical area that that's crazy and you might have noticed that we haven't really seen metaton this run there he was yeah who who is that guy he seems like a weird character i think he's dlc i'm not really sure yeah all right there we go just skip the alfie's cutscene wait <laughs> this oh. is a long elevator skip yep and that I always find it funny because the punch card text says, please come back. And I, I like to imagine that's just the characters begging us to see their cutscenes. <laughs> Alright, so we just got a couple of wrong warps here. Uh, nice. Uh, Skips so much walking. Alright, now uh, in this first part of New Home, we will just be doing a bunch of... A few skips. This one is just saves a bit of movement. And I got the key, nice. That's good. This is unskippable text, so it's very long. Yeah, this is a very big story segment where almost all of it is unskippable text. There's a couple skips at the beginning here. Like yeah, like that. this one, uh, co coming right up. Yep. That one, we go into a room and. Yeah, that one we go into. Scene. Yeah. No other. Well, there's one more cutscene skip actually later on. But unfortunately, because you don't really get much opportunity to move after you hear the like exclamation mark above your head, you can't really move very far, so you kind of just have to deal with it. That room is the only instance where you can, like, you have enough distance to just move directly into the room. Um, so we've got one more skip coming up here, and then after that, uh, we have a lot of time for donations. A lot of time to just chill out, listen to this cool music. Yeah, very good track. Yeah, the music in this game is so, so good. It's so good. Alright. That's three pixels, so we just wrong up here, and we just skip the loop cutscene there, so... Yeah. But that is the final new home cutscene skip. And uh, one of the final PCEs uh, of yeah. the game because we are coming up on uh, the final fight. Final two fights. So yeah, that's a lot of time for donations. 
Okay, well, we did just get another $40 from Dad Says Right, Right. So now Right is in the lead. There is a $15 gap, though, so who knows? Anything could happen at this stage. Right is coming in clutch. <laughs> right is coming in clutch at the moment, indeed. Um, okay, so... Uh, just want to remind everyone that we also have a number of prizes to give away for those who donate. So um, anyone within Australia who is donating uh, at least $10 uh, will go automatically in the running to win one of our Steam Game bundles. Uh, we have five different bundles available to win. Um, and for more information on that, those bundles and the prizes and whatnot, please head on over to prizes.ozspeedruns.com. And of course, we do have a number of incentives for all the different games coming up. Um, so please do check out our incentives. Um, it has been fun watching this bidding war go underway and reading everyone's um, great comments. So definitely take some time to check those out um, if you're feeling generous, like you want to donate. So yeah, check it out. Thank you. Yeah, and that incentive I believe will close in about five minutes, maybe 10. We I, did. I don't remember exactly like how <laughs> long everything takes. We did actually just get, I do apologize for jumping in, we did actually just get another $40 from Chili Pepper, who is insistent on uh, keeping the eye on the incentive. So uh, they said, keeping an eye on the incentive here. Need to do better than that, right, gang? Another $40 to left, gang. Oh. Wow. All right. Thanks, Chili Pepper. King Asgore will do three things. <laughs> Alright, coming up on the last few cutscenes here. There is a really, like, quick section of wrong warps right after another that not only are wrong warps that, like, move you quite a distance, but they're also uh, cutscene skips. Yeah. It's really cool. This one, we uh, Sans judges us for. Well, we killed one monster, so he's gonna judge us for that. But uh, we realized uh, we don't want to. So nah, we're just gonna skip that. It's a long cutscene anyway. So. Hi Sans. Bye Sans. Bye. Yeah, and that skips the Asgore cutscene. That skips another cutscene, and that's Asgore. And that, that's all the PCs for the run, so just have... Uh... Now, Asgore, very hard fight, because, like I said, the Burnt Pan's a very powerful weapon. Uh, with perfect fit, hit, it does a lot of damage. The thing is, that perfect hit requires four frame-perfect inputs. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, four frame perfect inputs because the burnt pan has four little lines and you have to hit them in the middle perfectly. You can get a semi-perfect hit by getting three, but you're aiming for as many as you can. And you, um, I believe ten is task or uh, ten I think, cycle? I think it's nine in neutral and ten in true bass first. Makes right. sense. See how this goes. And Asgore does a fair bit of damage as well. So this fight is actually quite scary. Like, it does require a lot of practice and getting used to. But I think Oliver's gonna make it look easy, so. Nice. See how much. Co um, the perfect fire, uh, theoretically, it requires every single hit to be perfect, so that's. That's 36 frame perfect inputs. Hey. Oh, nice. I'm glad I got one. <laughs> yeah. So each time you see that little, like, golden circle in the middle of Asgore's body, there, that's a either a full perfect hit or a semi-perfect hit. And that does a lot of damage, so it's really good. And this is one of the early monsters where we actually Three. have to, like, lower his health to zero. That's really nice. Not bad. Oh. Nice. Still very close. Whiffs in like the exact same way. Yeah. Even the semi-perfect hits, they're so hard. Like the the lines just go 
so much faster than you think they do, and it's just, it's I, really ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. you should look at the ballet shoes. Oh, true, they they yeah. move even faster. Yeah, so there is a, obviously, the 36 frame per inputs we refer to as Tascore. Um, nice contraction of Tas and Asgore. This might be the last turn of the fight. Um, not quite. I think one more. With the lot at the end there. There we go. Finish nice. off. And uh, so basically, that at that point. Basically, 99% of the run is done because uh, this last section is basically, most, for the most part, an auto scholar. So, if you see like a runner on pace for a world record, this is where you see them basically celebrating it. Yeah. Because it's basically done. So, you do actually kill uh, Asgore here. Uh, funnily enough, it doesn't actually matter for true pacifist ending uh, because of shenanigans. Yeah, Flowey kills, kills Asgore either way. Um, but the cutscene for killing him is faster. Alright, uh, just gonna be, uh, Flower's gonna force close the game here, so I'm gonna just, uh, I believe the... Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, cool. So this is the glitched version of Undertale, or Flowey Tale, as he likes to call it. Um, this whole section, Omega Flowey, is more or less a very long auto-scroller. Um, and there's a lot of cutscenes, and we will be closing the incentive, I think, yeah. about uh, when this fight starts. So you've got about maybe 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on right, gang. Yeah, and this is all unskippable text, so instead of matching ZX and shift this whole time, uh, we're just matching Z and enter, and that's the best you can do. He's got a lot to say. He, he does, he does yap. Certified yapper. He is a certified gaffer. But yeah, the Omega Flowey fight is very long. Um, it consists of six phases, uh, six soul phases, uh, one for each of the different human souls apart from Frisk. Um, and between each of the soul phases, you can actually die, and that loses a fair bit of time. Uh, but during the soul phases, you actually can't die, so yeah. there's going to be a lot of damage tanking. And you got to heal at the end of every soul phase as well. So it ends up being a very long auto scroller. Um, but it does look really cool because Omega Flowey is just such a cool fight. And yeah. Or Photoshop Flowey, as some people call him. Good. Yeah, good psychological horror elements here. Alright. Here we go. And yeah, the fourth of these soul phases is, is the one where where left right bid war will come into play. So I'll just need to know uh, which incentive won. Photoshop fly before, but it's just RNG, it's, basically. Yeah, many cases where it's just impossible to dodge. So first soul phase again, can't just, die in the soul phase, so we just go up to the top right where the act thing is, so we can trigger it as soon as we can. And this one, I can just automatically get absolutely fully healed. So pretty cool. Yeah, really nice. Donation 
did you want to know what which side? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh, left side uh, was the winner. Oh. So we had another fifteen dollar donation saying left is best. So pushed it up quite a bit. All right. Easy. This one just. This one can't. I can't quite get a full heal, but pretty good heal. So. Flammy's going to be messing up safe states this whole time as well, which is such a cool way of doing a boss fight. In fact, a uh, fun the fact about this fight is if you try to go back to your regular save file, if you look, um, looked at actually read Flowey's text there, he basically essentially got rid of it, so whenever you open the game, it'll just launch you straight into this fight. And this one, yeah, we just go to the right side of the screen, get the act button as soon as possible. A little full heal if we just move all the way to the right here. And this next soul phase will be the left right gang in center. Yep. little bit there's gonna be long lines and the act can appear on left or the right so that's why you pick fortunately we're gonna have to go left gang yeah so we go left and basically we're gonna be right i told you ended up being right i told you i don't know the exact chance but i think it's 50 50. i think it is 50 50. yeah saves a tiny bit of time, but that's like kind of one of the only time saves in this fight, and it's barely anything, so it's just a little mean in the community. Yeah. A lot of streamers, like, basically just join games and fully believe in one of those sides. I am a member of Riot Gang, so I've always been. And this one, uh, it's a pretty funny phase because we can just go into the above the, butt, the pans here and just get the act button straight away. Like right now. Nice. And then not only that, I can just stay still and get all, all the heals. The heal. Yeah. Before they even appear on screen, just get healed. It's I funny. really thought those things looked like eyeballs, but I was informed that they're pancakes, I think. I thought they were eggs. <laughs> no one knows what they are. I believe fighting in this phase does not matter. It does like a few a few bits of damage, but compared to Huawei's about a few ten thousand. Alright. This soul phase we wanna uh wait till eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And bam. And then as soon as this phase ends, so uh, I'll just wait for an audio cue, I'll have to We open the game again. Uh, so then, because that skips a short cutscene and just gets us straight into the final phase, which I'm going to be going for quick kill, involves delaying um, pressing the fight button. So then, just because of how much damage each fight button is doing, it kills Flowey just about two seconds earlier. I, I'm not consistent at it, I'll see if I get it. At this point in the run, people usually spam in chat because of Flowey, so... Yeah, over on Twitch you guys can do that if you want. You can actually die in this phase, so you do need to be a little bit careful, but thankfully yeah. you do get heals. Turning the owls will be turning to Uru soon. Yeah. Hey, nice. 
nice. That's basically the last trick of the run. Help me out. Cool. So there is one more force close. Uh, I'm gonna be going for two more right okay. at the end, just for just very small time saves. Yeah, but little cuts in here. I have to match the key keys here so then we can see the soul moving around a bit. Yeah. And this one we're actually right in the um, friendliness pellets there, just so that we get hit on our first frame. Because if you get hit early there, then you get healed as soon as you get hit. It's actually the same idea as the very first fight of the game. Yeah. When you first meet Flowey, which is really cool. Oh wait, I just remembered I don't actually need a mash to skip this text, so that's, we just get to watch it, I guess. Yeah, coming up to the end of the run, though. So, um... Yeah, we call time as soon as I get to the door. Walk through the door, yeah. I forgot what it is. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and kill Flowey and then immediately close the game. Uh, right now, just going for a game close right now. Uh, should be good. Yeah, cool. Then again, as soon as we hear Flowey talk. And time. You know what? That's pretty good. Nice. Right. And right now we have. So, yeah, that's Undertale Neutral. You have three instances of the game running at yep, the same time. This happens at the end of every run. Yeah, that's Undertale. Yeah. Nice run.
Alright, and just before we get into Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen, any percent by Baffy, we have $50 from Chili Pepper, who says, Can't believe Left Gang came in ahead and the runner rigged it anyway. Shaking my head. Please put this one towards the Blind Necron right incentive, and well done for the crazy Undertale run. And as a fun fact, we are at 68 donations at the moment, which is a pretty nice number, but I think it can be nicer, so keep those coming in.
All right, and we are ready to get underway with Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen, and Sent by Bathy. Take it away. <laughs> 